end of the road for trucking giant Yellow. After nearly a century in operation and over a decade of financial turmoil, the company shut down its operations and filed for bankruptcy. Yellow struggled to refinance its outstanding debt of about $1.5 billion, and they faced a sudden drop in business. Now, back in June, the company sued the Teamsters Union, claiming the union unjustifiably blocked restructuring plans necessary for Yellow to stay afloat. Joining me now is Freightways founder and CEO Craig Fuller. Craig, good morning. Your reaction to all of this, and to be clear, you know, Darren Hawkins was on this program in early July, and he, he said to me at the time, We've, we've offered these these employees, 22,000 of these teamsters, pay raises and better benefits. They won't come to the table. They will not come to the table and negotiate. That's what he said. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, certainly the teamsters um, have some responsibility, particularly at the end, for sort of dragging on the negotiations and putting Yellow in a really precarious position. Um, but, you know, Yellow, this story, this situation is really a decade plus in the making. Yellow was a underperforming company that tried to do a roll up of union carriers back in the uh, mid 2000s. And unfortunately it was saddled with a lot of debt and trucking is an incredibly volatile market. The Teamsters, the way that they operate and their contracts don't allow for the flexibility. And when you're dealing with multiple companies that uh, were not consolidated, um, it created a lot of challenges for Yellow to survive. It was a low-cost leader, simply because that's the only way it could get freight because its service wasn't dependable. And because it didn't have a flexible workforce and the ability to sort of respond to market conditions, um, it just struggled for you know well over a decade. And here we are where uh, now it's uh, shut down. Well, I mean, they've got 30,000 workers, 22,000 of those were, were Teamsters. I mean, those jobs are gone. I mean, in the industry, I mean, this is the biggest trucking uh, failure we've seen, company failure we've really ever seen. And I want to play you really quick. I want, I want, let's, let's play Darren Hawkins in his own words. And I want you to listen to what he said. The disagreement has been over the modernization of the company. The first phase went in over eight months ago and had union alignment. Uh, the second phase has not had union alignment, and that's brought us to where we are today with an immediate need to negotiate and to open and not only talk about modernization, but also keeping the company competitive moving forward by raising wages and addressing all employee concerns. I mean, that was his message. Do you, do you say that that was not enough? Because what he, what he said to me was, look, we were, we were trying, we were reaching out over and over for nine plus months. Yeah, it's a travesty. I think the Teamsters have a lot of responsibility, particularly Sean O'Brien, who's focused on UPS's negotiation, didn't seem to be concerned about Yellow's uh, precarious position. You know, the company was out of cash. The concessions that uh, the company offered were not responded to. In fact, some of the local um, union stewards that were, uh, were did not have a voice in Washington to really influence the national uh, Teamsters organization have told us at Freightwaves that uh, they didn't have a vote or a say. They were not aware that there was some in concessions being made by Yalo's management to really address the situation. So Teamsters are certainly responsible for the lack of flexibility to make to enable Yellow's profitability and enable it to survive. It certainly didn't do it any favors in the situation. And the question is, where do these jobs end up? We have 30,000 jobs. It's one of the largest, not just trucking bankruptcies in history, but just in terms of companies shutting down in terms of employee count, 30,000 people are losing their jobs. And the teachers, you know, failed to come to the table and failed to negotiate um, and didn't seem to be concerned about Yalo's precarious position. Well, Sean O'Brien. Right, no, I'll tell you what, no, Sean O'Brien, you know, he tried to come back to them 12 hours before the shutdown to try to call off the strike, and it was it was too late. Uh, he'd already, you know, he met his bed. Let's be clear here. Every single shipper, anybody that was dependent upon Yellow pulled its freight. Because the last thing you want to do, think about being a bank run. You don't want freight inside the Yellow system. If you know it's going to shut down, you know it's going on strike, you don't want your freight inside your network because you may never get it back. If these terminals shut down and they're unsecured, that freight's going to end up on eBay. And I think that's really what uh, every shipper, whether we're talking Walmart or Home Depot or Amazon, was concerned about. They pulled their freight. And this is inevitably what put Yell out of business. Well, and Francis Newton Stacey's on set with me. And you made the comment, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about the debt, because you made the comment that that debt 
the refinancing of that was just, it wasn't going to happen, right? For yeah, that was the thing that gave the Teamsters all of their leverage. And I think that that's, do you see any other trucking companies that are this over levered that are at risk for having Teamster attacks? No, I mean, this is a situation where Yellow is a really, um, you know, financially it, it was not viable. It had been bailed out on multiple occasions. Sort of a cockroach that sort of lived on, and I hate to use that description to describe a company that's now out of business, but um, the reality is it was a company that had been bailed out on multiple occasions. It received a $700 million loan from the U.S. Treasury back in COVID, and that made sense. I mean, we're trying to protect jobs. Now we're looking at a situation where those jobs are not going to be replaced. Teamsters jobs are not coming back. I mean, the, the trucking industry has largely uh, moved away from unions uh, with the exception of UPS. And we only have two other national union carriers that have uh, are around. So those jobs are not coming back. And one thing to point out is everybody talks about the $700 million loan. The Teamsters got a pension bill out of $36 billion from Biden in January that really protected the pension. So there's a lot of Teamsters that have talked about losing the pension. The reality is that pension's safe, but those jobs are not. Wow. Craig Fuller, uh, fascinating. Thank you for that interview. We really appreciate it.